practice holding the name. When the water clearing pond is tossed in muddy water, the muddy water becomes clear. When the Buddha's name enters a confused mind, the confused mind attains to the Buddha. This sutra takes faith, vows, and holding the name as its doctrine. Having discussed faith and vows, we shall now discuss holding the name. Reciting the Buddha's name is like throwing a pole into muddy water so that the muddy water becomes clear. This clear water pole can purify even the filthiest water. Recitation of the Buddha's name is like this pole. We can count the false thoughts which fill our minds and succeed one another endlessly like waves on the sea. When the Buddha's name enters a confused mind, the confused mind becomes the Buddha. Recite the name once and there is one Buddha in your mind. Recite it ten times and there are ten Buddhas. Recite it a hundred times and there are a hundred Buddhas. The more you recite, the more Buddhas there are. Say, Namo Amitabha Buddha. There is a Buddha thought in your mind. When you are mindful of the Buddha, the Buddha is mindful of you. It's like communication by radio or radar. You recite here and is received there. But if you don't recite, nothing is received. So you must hold and recite the name. In the Dharma ending age, recitation of the Buddha's name is the most important Dharma draw. Don't take it lightly. Every time Dhyana Master Yung Ming Shou, the sixth patriarch of the Pure Land School, recited the Buddha's name, a transformation Buddha came out of his mouth. Those with the five eyes and six spiritual penetrations could see it. When you recite the Buddha's name, you emit a light which frightens all weird creatures and strange gods away. They run far, far away and leave you alone. So the merit and virtue of holding the Buddha's name is inconceivable. Holding and reciting the Buddha's name, you should, as it says in the doctrine of the mean, grasp it tightly in your fist. Do not let it go. Thought after thought, recite the name. There are four methods of reciting. Contemplating and thinking Buddha recitation, contemplating an image Buddha recitation, real mark Buddha recitation, holding the name Buddha recitation. The first contemplating and thinking Buddha recitation consists of the contemplation of Amitabha Buddha. Amitabha Buddha's body is of golden hue. This fine marks radiant beyond compare. His white light is as high as five mouth sumerus. His purple eyes as clear and vast as four great seas. Countless transformation Buddhas appear within the light, with transformation Buddhi Bodhisattvas also limitless. His 48 vows take living beings across in nine grades of lotuses they ascend to the other shore. Amitabha Buddha's appearance is the result of the perfection of his merit and virtue. He has all of the 32 marks and the 80 minor characteristics of a Buddha and his bright light is incomparable. Between his eyebrows, there are fine white beams of light as big as five mouth sumerus, and his eyes are as large as four great seas. How big do you think his body is? There are nine grades of lotuses superior, 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 middle, superior, inferior, middle, superior, middle, 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 inferior, 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 middle, inferior, superior. Each of the nine grades also has nine ranks, making 81 in all. Living beings in all of these grades are led to the other shore, Nirvana, the second kind of 
Buddha recitation. Contemplating the image consists of making offerings to an image of Amitabha Buddha and reciting his name while contemplating it. Contemplate and in time you will have success. When you achieve the third real mark recitation, even if you try, you cannot stop reciting the Buddha's name. The recitation flows like water and lives with you. This is the state of the Buddha recitation samadhi, reciting and yet not reciting, not reciting and yet reciting. The fourth kind of Buddha recitation is that of holding the name, both moving and still, one recites Namo Amitabha Buddha. Recitation must be clear and distinct, and the three commas of body, mouth, and mind must be pure. The mouth is free from the four evil commas of abusive language, profanity, lying, and gossip, and gossip. And the body is without the three evil commas of killing, stealing, or sexual misconduct. The mind has no greed, hatred, or stupidity. When one is free of the ten evil deeds, then the karma of body, mouth, and mind is pure. In this way, one thought pure is one thought of the Buddha. When every thought is pure, every thought is of the Buddha. The pure heart is like the moon in the water. The mind in samadhi is like the colorless glass sky. And if you can recite so completely that you enter the Buddha recitation samadhi, then hearing the wind is Namo Amitabha Buddha, and hearing the rain is Namo Amitabha Buddha. Every sound you hear recites the Buddha's name. Water flows, the wind blows. Proclaiming the Mahayana, the Chinese poet uh, Su Dongpo said, Of the colors of the mountain, none are not his vast long tongue. Of the sounds of the streams, all are the clear pure sound. All the mountain's colors are the Buddha's long tongue, proclaiming the wonderful Dharma. This is the attainment of the Buddha recitation samadhi. So I wrote this verse. If you recite the Buddha's name, reciting without cease, the mouth recites Amitta and makes things of a peace. Scattered thoughts do not arise, samadhi you attain. For rebirth in the pure land, your hope is not in vain. If all day you detest the suffering, sahas pain, make rebirth in ultimate bliss, your mind's essential aim. Cut off the red dust thoughts within your mind. Put down impure reflections and pure thoughts you will find. Recite the Buddha's name from morning to night and your confused thoughts will not arise. You will naturally attain the Buddha recitation samadhi and be reborn in the land of ultimate bliss according to your will. You know that the Saha wound is full of pain and suffering, so cut off worldly pleasures and have no thoughts of sexual desire, craving or struggling for fame and profit. Put down all worldly concerns and view them as forms. Seek rebirth, ultimate bliss. This thought of rebirth is extremely important. The verse clearly explains the principles of reciting the Buddha's name. Holding and reciting the name is like picking up something in your hand and never letting it go. Recite Namo Amitabha Buddha every day and trace out your scattered thoughts. This Dharma door fights poison with poison. False thinking is like poison and unless you encounter it with poison, you will never kill it. Reciting the Buddha's name is fighting false thinking with false thinking. It is like sending out an army to defeat an army, to fight a battle, to end all battles. If you have a good defense, other countries won't attack. 
constant recitation drives out false thinking, so that you may attain the Buddha recitation samadhi. The third of the fivefold profound meanings then is to take faith, vows, and holding the name as the doctrine. Discussing the function, the fourth of the fivefold profound meanings is to determine the sutra's power and use. Its power is that of non-retreat and its use is rebirth. Reborn in the land of ultimate bliss, you attain to the stage of no retreat. Cultivators of other Dharma doors are somewhat insecure. No one ensures them. They may recite mantras or sutras for several years and then retreat with a feeling of no accomplishment or gain. If not in this life, they may retreat in the next. Perhaps they are vigorous now, but later they take a rest. To say nothing of common people, even our hearts have the confusion of dwelling in the womb and forget their spiritual penetrations. Bodhisattvas have the confusion called splitting the yin, which means the same thing. If they meet a good knowing advisor who teaches them to cultivate, they can wake up. Otherwise, life after life, they retreat and find it very hard to bring forth the body heart again. It is easy to regress. Born in the land of ultimate bliss, there is no backsliding, just vigorous progress. One attains the four kinds of non-retreat, non-retreating position. Born in the land of ultimate bliss, you attain the Buddha position. Born in transformation uh, from a lotus, when the flower blooms, you see the Buddha, hear the drama, awaken to the unproduced drama, patience and never fall again. Non-retreating conduct, most people cultivate vigorously for one life, but in the next they are lazy. In the land of ultimate bliss, there is none of the suffering of the three evil paths. The Kalavinka Kappas and Two-Headed Birds all help Amitabha Buddha speak about the drama. Reborn there, one will no longer be lazy in conduct, but will only go forward with courage and vigor. Non-retreat thought in the Saha world, we cultivate vigorously, but after a time we feel it's too bitter, too restrictive, too uncomfortable, and so we are no longer vigorous. Lazy thoughts arise, and although we have not yet retreated in conduct, we have in thought several decades pass quickly, and thoughts of retreat greatly outnumber those of vigor. It's difficult not to regress. In the land of ultimate bliss, one hears the drama spoken all day and all night long. One has no thoughts of retreat from the body mind. All thoughts, all thoughts are irreversible. Ultimate non-retreat, transformationally, born from a lotus, you will never, under any circumstances, retreat again, either to the level of a common person or to the small vehicle or bodhisattva level. Born in the land of ultimate bliss, you obtain these four kinds of non-retreat. Determining the teaching mark. The Chipitaka is divided into three parts, sutras which deal with samadhi, sastra which deal with wisdom, and vinaya which deal with morality. This text belongs to the sutra division and as such it is permanent and unchanging two characteristics of sutras, when all other Buddha dramas have become extinct. This sutra will remain in the world an additional hundred years and save limitless living beings. For this reason, it differs from other sutras of the three vehicles, Sravakas, conditionally enlightened ones, and Bodhisattvas. This sutra belongs to the Bodhisattva Vihaiko, it takes across Bodhisattva suited to the Great Vihaiko. 
knowing the sutra's title classification and its fivefold profound meanings i we have now a general understanding of the buddha's bricks of amitabha sutra